Hi, my name is Nick Osborne, and this is a brief video all about my latest trip to our local market with my wife to do the shopping for fresh fruit and vegetables. So this is stories from our local market. We live in Montreal, Canada, and the first language in Montreal is French, so you'll see some French signage as we go through, but I will help you with that. So when we went to the market, we, we spent about an hour there, which is fairly typical, and I also took some photographs as we were wandering around because I've been thinking a lot about the power of stories in marketing recently. And it struck me just before we set off for our latest trip to the market that in a way, a local market like this is a microcosm of larger national or even international markets. So here we have people selling fresh vegetables, and here we have someone else selling fresh vegetables. So it begs the question, as in any market, how do you differentiate yourself? Uh, I guess you can sell different stuff. You can present it in different ways, which is what this guy is doing. Uh, there are a lot of stalls in this market selling apples. Uh, there are an awful lot of orchards in Quebec. So apples is uh, for sale everywhere starting at about this time of year. So presentation, the way you present your produce can make a difference. So this guy has got very smart counters and shelves and, and display overall. Sometimes there is a genuine point of difference. So this is around, around the edge of the market. There are some more permanent stores with the kind of seasonal stalls in the center. So among these permanent stores around the edge is this butcher and they're an artisanal artisan butcher uh, but they they sell um, organic they sell organic meat so that's a genuine point of difference it's not about appearance it's saying hey if you want meat that's organic this is the place to come to sometimes and you see this probably in your own local supermarket it's about free samples or discounts so you can see the big fat arrow there pointing to, I don't know, there's probably some peach or nectarine slices there. So that people, as they go by, can uh, have a taste, see if they like it, and then hopefully buy. So you'll find a lot of the fruit vendors uh, competing with one, each, with one another, you know, just across a single aisle. And one of the ways they compete is by offering these free samples. So fairly, fairly kind of basic marketing 101 there when it comes to food retail. But what I found interesting is the way in which some stall holders were marketing and differentiating themselves with stories. So this poster here, and I'll help you with the translation here, basically they're saying it says this stall is the initiative of our son, Maxim. And at the bottom there, you've got mom and dad uh, with Maxim in the center in the white t-shirt. And it's a, it's a local farm family. And they're kind of proud of their son because their son, instead of saying, hey, forget this farming thing, I'm going off to the city, said, no, I want to stay and work on the farm and keep it going for another generation. But something I think we do need to do is get our produce into the city. So let's get a stool at this market. So mom and dad are proud and they're saying, hey, this is this is the initiative of our son that we have this stall. So it's a small family story that is being shared, but it kind of touches us at other levels as well, because I think a lot of us are aware that family farms are disappearing, uh, certainly across North America, and that most of our food now is factory farmed in one way or another. So we've got a family story here. We've got a parent-son story happening here. And then we have a kind of deeper societal story happening about what's happening in the world. So, yeah, it engages you as, a, as you pass by. And if they have produce that is very similar to the produce to the stall just across the aisle or just before them, I'm probably going to buy from these people because they have engaged me with story. Another way to engage people with story, and perhaps a slightly better one, although it can't be done all the time, is one-on-one. -on -one. So a few slides back, we saw the guy with the fancy white shelving selling apples and apple juice and things. Well, this guy is doing it in a much more basic way from wooden crates. And so he's offering me 
just, you know, he says, hey, sample this apple. So I try the apple. I buy some apples. We get into a very brief conversation, maybe only two or three minutes, where he's talking about where his apple orchard is and, you know, the state of the, you know, the, the crop this year. Very brief conversation, but totally engaging. Now, you can't always do it one-to-one, which is why this is a way to get your story out to more people. And, and we do it every day through websites and print and, and whatever other media we use. But of course, one-to-one will always be the fastest way to, to create some kind of bond. And here, this was our final stop for the day at the market. And you can see our full bags at the bottom right there. We went to, Anyway, we went into this store where they sell loose tea. We wanted some loose tea to make some cold tea for the summer. And they also sell spices. So we go in, there's a nice young man, helps us choose some teas. And we go a little deeper into the store. And I see that poster. You can see it. You can just see it at the top right hand corner of the photo there, showing a lady and her husband. And they're describing themselves as the spice hunters. So I think, oh, well, that's interesting. And then I notice the lady on the left holding the baby. And I think, wait a minute, she's from the photo. She's the spice hunter. So being the inquisitive, nosy person that I am, I wander up and I engage her in conversation. And my wife and I probably stay there 10, 15 minutes chatting with these people, with, with all of them, because she's the mother. Her husband was out front. That's her daughter behind the counter. That's her granddaughter on her knee. The young fellow who sold us the loose tea is her son. There's three generations that are involved in this business. And we so we purchased the tea, we purchased a pestle and mortar, and we purchased one of her cookbooks and some spices that go with the cookbooks. And we kept, you know, we learned more about the story. So absolutely, next time we need to buy any of those things, we'll certainly go back to that store because we were totally engaged with the story of this family and how they travel around the world looking for spices and then bring it back to their store here. Part of this is the one-on-one. You can do it with the store, but you can't really do it to the same level online. But also, they've produced videos, they've helped produce TV programs, they have a website, they've published a couple of books, recipe books. So they are getting the story out in ways that can potentially reach millions of people. But it's all talking, you know, that's why they call themselves the Spice Hunters. It's a, it's a story. It's a story. It's like TV. It's like an adventure. It, it has all the makings of it. It implies story when you say Spice Hunters. So, so this family, three generations of this family, I mean, they have a wonderful story. It's a fascinating story. But they clearly either deliberately or intuitively understand this, the power of story when it comes to marketing. The bottom line, like this, this was just this is what you've seen is like us wandering around. My wife and I are wandering around the market, at doing our shopping, but at the same time, I'm, I'm kind of keeping my eye out, and my wife's keeping her eye out for for story, and I'm just taking some of these, you know, I'm taking these photographs, and it is it's a microcosm of marketing as a whole, and stories are a very powerful way to attract, engage an audience, to to make an audience care about you and to help convert a group of strangers into customers and fans. Anyway, I've been obsessing a little bit about stories recently simply because I very recently finished a course that I, that I wrote and created about selling with stories. If you want to learn more about that course, you can just go to that URL at the bottom, nickosborne.com forward slash selling hyphen with hyphen stories. Anyway, I hope you found that useful and thank you for your attention.